Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Click that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on my post notifications. That way you lovely people get notified every single time I upload a video. Excuse me. In today's video, we are going to go into part two of chapter 26. So let's just get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. You have been warned. Her eyes welled up and spilled over, running down her face to the rough carpet. Why couldn't she sink through the ground now, disappear, but disappear to somewhere DT couldn't get to her? At least she told her mom she loved her before she walked out the door. At least her mom had that small moment of to hold on to. But what about her dad? When he last, when he had, when had she last? said it to him or to Josh. Would Josh even remember what she looked like when he was all grown up? And what about Robbie? When was the last time she told Robbie she loved him? Not enough, never enough. What if he didn't truly know this was going to destroy him? Pip cried harder, tears gathering around the tape across her mouth. Please don't let him blame himself. He was her best thing, and now she would always be the worst thing that had happened to him. A pain in his chest he'd never forget. But he would look for her, and he wouldn't find her, but he would find her killer. Pip was sure of it. Ravi would do that for her justice, that slippery word. But they would never need, they would need it, so they, they could all eventually learn to move on without her. Lay flowers at her grave once a year. Wait, what was the date today? She didn't even know the date of the day she was going to die. She cried and cried harder until the, those more rational parts of herself took over, pulled her back from despair. Yes, Robbie would find her killer, would know who he was, but there was a difference between knowing and being able to prove it, a world of difference between those two things. Pip had learned that the hard way. That was something she could do, though, a plan to keep her mind busy. Pip could help them find her killer, to lock him away in a cage. She just needed to leave enough of herself behind in the trunk, hair, skin, anything with her DNA, cover his car with it, at least the remaining traces of her, her final mark upon the world, an arrow straight to him. Yes, she could do that. That was something she could do. She stretched back and rubbed her head against the carpet harder, harder until it hurt and she could feel the hairs pulling from her scalp. She shuffled the lower and did it again. Next, skin. There wasn't much exposed so she could that she could use, but she had her face and had her hands. She twisted her neck, pushed her cheek into the carpet, and she grated it back and forth. It hurt and she cried, but it kept but she kept going. The bone in her cheek raw and grazed. If it bled, that was even better. Leave blood behind. See him try to get away with that. Then her hands moving awkwardly against the duct tape. She scraped her knuckles into the carpet and against the backs of the passenger seats. What else could she do? She could she cast her mind back through all the cases she'd ever studied. The three syllables came to her, a word so obvious she didn't know how she hadn't thought of it first. Fingerprints. The police already had her fingerprints on file to eliminate her after Stanley died. Yes, that was it. The swirling spiderweb prints of her fingers would be the net she left behind to tighten and tighten around DT until he was caught, but she needed a hard surface. Carpet wouldn't work. Pip glanced around. There was a a back window. She couldn't get to it because of the dark cover slanting down over the trunk. Wait, the sides, the sides of the car by her head and her feet were encased in plastic. That would work. Pip drew her legs in close and pushed her sneakers against the carpet, sliding herself up and round again until she was curled up, a, up small against the side of the plastic within reach of her bound hands. She did one hand at a time, placing and pressing each finger into the plastic several times, up and down whenever she could reach. The thumbs were the hardest because of the tape, but she managed to make contact with every, with the very tops of them. This was a partial print at least. Okay, what next? The car itself seemed to answer, jumping as the wheels drove over something, another sharp turn. How long had they been driving now? And what would Robbie's face look like when he was told she was dead? No, stop that. She didn't want to imagine that in her head. She, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. I had to take that cake out of the oven. The first time it wasn't completely done. That's why we're doing a part two of this. But here we go. 
And what would Robbie's face look like when he was told she was dead? No, stop that. She didn't want that image in her head. She wanted to remember him smiling in her last hours. He told her she was the bravest person he knew. Pip didn't feel brave now, not at all. But at least the version that lived in Robbie's head was the one that he had turned to ask. What would Pip do now? Pip tried it herself with Robbie. With the Robbie who lived inside her head, she turned to him and sh she asked, What would you tell me to do if you were here with me? Robbie answered. He would tell her to not give up, even if, even if that's what the statistics and logic told her to do. Fuck that, less than 1%. You're Pippa frickin' Fitz and Bowie, my little Sarge. Pip is Maximus, and there's nothing you can't do. It's too late, she said back to him. He told her it wasn't too late. She was, wasn't was at the second location yet. There was still time, and there was still a fight left in her. Get up, Pip. Get up. You can do this. Get up. She could do this. She could. Robbie was right. She wasn't at a second location yet. She was still in the car, and she could use the car to her advantage. Her chances of surviving a car crash were far higher than her chances of surviving a second location. The car seemed to agree with her, the wheels growing louder against the gravel road, urging her on. Make him crash the car. Survive. That was a new plan. Her eyes darted to the bottom of the trunk door. There wasn't a latch she could use her use here to open the door and roll out. There, the only way was through the back passenger seats and from there throw herself at him, make him lose control of the wheel. Okay, two options. Kick at the back seat hard enough to break it, fold it down, or she could climb over the top in the gap above the headrest. And to do that, all she had to do was remove this cargo cover above her. <coughs> Pip went with option two. The cover was rigid. She felt she felt it with her knees, but it only could be attached on two sides by a hook or a mechanism. She just needed to readjust her position, slide down, and then kick up the corner until it came loose. The car slowed to a stop, a stop too long to just be a turn. Fuck. Pip's eyes widened. She held her breath so she could hear. There was a sound, a car door opening. What was he doing? Was he leaving her somewhere? She waited for the slam of the door, but the follow-up sound didn't come, at least not for several seconds. And when it did, the car peeled off again slowly, not nearly fast enough for a crash. But it was only seven seconds before it drew to a gentle stop again. At this time, Pip heard the parking brake pull. There, they were here, the second location. It was too late. I'm so sorry, Pip told Robbie in her head, and I love you, just in case there was any way he could pass it on to the real one. Car door opened, car door closed, footsteps on gravel. The terror was back leaking out of the place at the back of her mind, where she thought she locked it away. Pip rounded into a ball, drew her knees up to her chest, she waited. The back door opened, he was standing right there, but all Pip could see was were his dark clothes up to his chest. A hand reached forward, pulled the cover above her head, and it retracted, rolling itself up against the back seat. Pip stared at him, a silhouette against the late afternoon sun, a monster in the daylight. Pip blinked her eyes, readjusting to the glare. Not a monster, just a man. A, fam a familiarity in the way he held his shoulders. The DT killer showed her his face, showed her the glint in his smile. It wasn't the face she thought she'd see. It was Jason Bell. That was different. That that gave us a lot of secrets that Yeah. Let's get Oh my goodness. I need to read the next chapter now.